Rahubat, everybody, shalom. This is your brother, I am Hotep Jeb Mutalib Atum L. Uh, I, I know I haven't made a video in a while. Um, I recently just uploaded all the videos I had made on my personal channel to my Golden War Services uh, branded channel. So um, if anybody's catching this, they used to watch my old videos on my personal account. I removed them all from my personal account and I moved them to um, the company account because that's what we're going to strictly focus on. And I'm not just focusing on child support. I focus on estate and trust planning um, and whoever I can get the information from because I work with a lot of people. I don't just, this ain't all just me, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, you know, I salute those people who help me that's in my network. Um, shit, man, there's a lot that's been going on, I guess. I guess you want to call it the child support movement. Um, but I see a lot of people acting like bitches and they're trying to get that money. The motherfuckers acting like bitches and they're trying to get money. And excuse my French, but, um... I have some constructive criticism to say about some people. Um, we already know about Wasil Bay. He's he's a fraud. Uh, that's a thousand percent accurate. He's a fraud, and that was brought up, uh, you know, by good brother Yahis Magnified. He's been he's been getting it in lately, um, but I would even caution him to you know not go at it like that. Like Wasil Bay used to go at it all. He even talk shit about some of my videos talking about, oh, uh, administrative processes don't work. And then Amen got somebody off on an administrative process. So while Bill, while Sil Bay is just in it to make money and try to make you look bad so he can get your customers, right? And then I'm seeing, um, and I'm just going to call the names out because I don't, I don't really care. And like I said, it's just constructive criticism. Um, Rick W is cool. Um, he fought, so I gotta respect a man who fights, first of all, because that's, that's the principle. Uh, so he fought, he won his case. His situation is a little different because he was married and the court had jurisdiction over him through, through a license, through a marriage license contract. And that's just the truth. And, uh, he seems not to understand that. <laughs> I commented on one of his videos. He's saying something about the constitution, um, saying i don't know what he was i forgot what video was he makes so many it, it, i don't know and then i made a comment simply just saying um well your constitutional rights your due process isn't guaranteed in an administrative court because now you're in a different venue and he said okay well why well, uh, here's a thought why don't you talk about your administrative courts on your channel and I'll talk about the Constitution on my channel. And it really sounded like a little fucking child. I feel like back then, I think Rick went from 40-something years old to like three. So I had to be his father and tell him, you know, I'm only, I'm only questioning. I'm not clowning you, dog. I'm not clowning you. I respect you fought. But now we're getting into an intellectual debate in which you've already backed down. You've lost already. As soon as you made that comment, you lost already because you showed a lack of intellect. So I said, look, I'm just I'm just a thinking man asking questions. Uh, and we're both trying to help each other learn this process. I don't know everything. I'm trying to I'm trying to learn as much as I can. But but for him to make a, a childish comment like that and people actually following this dude, I kind of feel uh, a little bad for his subscribers until he brings up his level of maturity to where he can have an intellectual uh, I wouldn't even call it a debate. I just had a question. I wouldn't even go on at the guy, but he felt like he couldn't see my angle or um, or he just didn't think deeply enough about what I was saying because I didn't say anything offensive. I'm all, well, you know, I just told him that due process is not guaranteed in the administrative court. So anyway, uh, move on to the last uh, um, person. Uh, who I learned a lot from, but kind of lost a <laughs> lost a little respect. Uh, Amen. I'm just gonna say Amen Osiris uh, taught me a lot, man. 
taught me a lot. A lot of other people taught me a lot too. So it's not just him about child support too. So um, he made a video about Jeremiah Edwards and why is he even giving this guy the time of day? I have no idea, no idea. But Jeremiah Edwards should be proud of himself because he got on men's attention. Um, I guess what he did worked. Um, so, and then he's talking about, um, oh, Jeremiah Edwards is, uh, oh, he's just a nigger. Oh, oh, my bad, he's white, so he can't be a nigger. So I said, right there, you're saying that, <laughs> that white people are better than you. <laughs> and the word nigger doesn't mean black. It doesn't mean you're from Africa. It doesn't mean, it just means it's a derogatory term for an ignorant, stupid person. They call him a nigger. You know what I'm saying? So I've called white people niggers. I'm from California. We say crazy shit out there. We call white people niggers all day, beat their asses like Reginald Denny did to, uh, I mean, Damian Football Williams did to Reggie whatever the fuck his name, it beat his ass right in the middle of the street during the riots. You know, L.A., we don't give a fuck out there, but anybody could be called a nigger. So for the simple fact that Amin said he can't be a nigger because he's white, he's already lost. In his mind, he's already lost. And I lost a lot of respect when he said that. I'm like, you must not know what the word nigger means. So I would suggest you go look that up um, in the dictionary, Webster's Dictionary. Uh, since you're into defining words. Uh, very disappointed that uh, he came across like that. But it also tells tells me what's in his mind, you know. And this whole God of law thing, whatever. Whatever you need to call yourself, you know, call yourself. He made a, a comment about Moors uh, on his video. And it was some stupid Moor. It was a stupid Moor who posted some shit about House Joint Resolution 192. And he's all into that probably RV Bay publications bullshit, which is all bullshit. And uh, I was talking to the Maku, which is chief uh, in the Wabic, and he said RV some he said some Tamahu Tamahu is a white white person. Some Tamahu had posted um, a YouTube video about exposing RV Bay publications, talking about oh you know enforce your constitutional rights and your right to travel and blah 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 and multiple thousands of moors have been arrested uh following taj Tariq bay and all these other freemason moors uh and they're going to jail and it's not like rv bay can turn around and fight in your defense you all on your own and there's no nation uh, they might print up some ID cards for you, but if any I can go buy a card printer and go print you up some ID cards. Call me up. My shit would look better than theirs. But I'm not into scams. I don't pull scams. And I don't mess with poor people with low intellect. You know, I try to teach them. Um, and I'm happy just to sit down and talk with you and build. You know? Um, even though, you know, we know we're, we're not like blacks and shit like that. Black is a brand, is a branding name, like Negro, uh, slave, chattel property. Black is a, is a, is a, is a slave label. So, I mean, if you're comfortable identifying yourself as black, that's cool, but it's going to hurt you in court. It's going to hurt you in court. Um, what was that court case back in the early 1800s? Uh, the Dred Scott case. Remember the justice said, uh, the black man has no rights so the white man has to respect. And it's true. It's true. Now, if you look at another court case where Abraham Lincoln actually defended a Moor, he said he's not black, he's a Moor. You know what I'm saying? Uh, your status changes. Now they have to respect you. The Moors uh, were around when the Constitution was written. You know, uh, real Moors know this. The phony ones trying to sell fake IDs and stuff, you know, they ain't shit. And Raz Mariah Bay and all this bullshit that they selling, the motherfuckers making money. They making money off you. And if you're black, don't be giving your money to these people. Check them out for a while. Check them out for a while. And if they start talking about, oh, Noam DeGuerre and... 
oh, the Treaty of uh, the Treaty of Paris is real. The Treaty of Paris is real. You can look it up on the internet. You can go to Library of Congress and get a copy of it. That shit is real. But the way they try to implement it and the way they educate people is kind of messed up. And then they never have a solution. They never, they don't have a proven solution. So I would advise my brothers and sisters when they go to these Moorish education, especially if you're American Moor. See, I'm a Nuwabian Moor. I follow the teachings of uh, Malachi York L. Now people say, oh, you know, he got arrested for uh, suppo allegedly molesting some children. I don't know about that. You know, Martin Luther King cheated on his wife, don't make him a bad person, but molesting children takes it a little step further, I understand. But what the man did was remarkable. So that's why I choose to be a Nawabian. And we actually have land. In Georgia, we actually have land. I've been to the land. I've met my chief. <laughs> American Moors can't say that because they don't have no land. So, anyway, I wanted to jump in. I know I spoke a long time. I'm sorry about that, y'all. But I had a lot of stuff to get off my chest. I haven't made a video in a minute. So let me actually take you to the website, uh, GoldenMooreServices.com, and I wanted to just uh, give you guys the updates. There's the number now uh, that you can call if you want my services. Uh, this book, an appointment, I'm not satisfied with this. This is a WordPress site and it's a, um, it's a plugin called um, Fastbook, but it's very primitive and uh, I don't get email notifications uh, when somebody books an appointment with me. So I'm not, I'm having my boy from India uh, fix that my developer and so everything else looks good I uh, actually wanted to take you to a new uh, blog that I wrote um, talking about jurisdiction and I want to talk about uh, there's this book everybody should get uh, it's by John Cleland Wells and it's called a treatise on the jurisdiction of courts and it, it's pretty easy to find um, a treatise on the jurisdiction of courts. All right, so this is a um, uh, it's a pretty good book on the jurisdiction. Yeah, it should be here somewhere. I found it on Amazon. Let's check it out on Amazon. A treatise on the juris. Um, uh, my the book. Okay, this is the exact book I have, the hardcover. So, you no, this is a different book. Hold on, hold on, play it. Organization of the Supreme Circuit of District. Oh, this is the Federal Supreme Court. Oh no, that might not be federal, but that's by Alfred Conkling. So that's that's not it. We're looking for John Cleveland Wells, but the cover of my book looks just like this. Is this the? Is this called the, a treatise on the jurisdiction of courts, courts and the jurisdiction of the present day, how jurisdiction is conferred in the mean? This looks like a pretty good book too, but man, the book I bought must not be here anymore. Oh man, y'all, y'all gonna have to jump on that, man. But this is the book that I have, even though the, the you know the cover is a little different by John Cleland Wells and I actually take snippets out of this book because it explains jurisdiction so well the inception of jurisdiction that I thought I'd relay it to some of my um, my viewers uh, just to get a sneak peek on some of the research that I do I don't just go to the internet and put in Wikipedia because some of the sources of those information are pretty flawed like I see in some of uh, um, Amin's posts of the videos that he does that he'll say that that you know during this case law a justice or a judge said this and I'll go look it up on Justia and I'll copy I'll go control F and I'll copy exactly what I see from these websites into here and nothing pops up like for instance if I said I want to find the word con conferred you know it's gonna search this whole web page and it's gonna find it for me quickly I don't have to waste my time. But if 
I type in, say if I'm looking at a case law here, and I type something here that's not there, let's say I put in the word uh, baby, bloom, that means they can't find us, zero to zero. So when I put these quotes in there on the case law, on the pages on just T, when I bring up the case law, it's not there. So that means that somebody's making up, putting disinformation out there that's actually going into some of your guys' paperwork when you send it to court. And they got paralegals that check that shit. So if your shit's fucked up, you ain't getting off child support. Like, oh, he just got this. And the judge will clown you and say, oh, you got this off the internet. This is a template. We've seen this shit before. Judges ain't stupid. You know what I'm saying? So um, listen to Yusuf L. more about that. Yeah, Yusuf's a pretty smart dude, man. But let me read this to you guys. Uh, I titled it. Is that a court of limited or general jurisdiction? Let me probably take off that last court. I'll edit that. All right, so jurisdiction is one of the subjects where intense study is needed. Even if you get the court to identify itself, you may still run into problems. Such problems may arise from lack of knowledge from defendant or a black robe refusing to identify the type of court you were invited to. The book, A Treatise on the Jurisdiction of Courts, is a Bible when it comes to the surreptitious study of the topic of jurisdiction. Section 39 explains presumptions, stated, Presumptions are conclusive and not to be rebutted where a matter is confided to discretion. Discretion, you guys should know what discretion means. That means uh, one's own good judgment and no appeal is given. All right. So... If there's no appeal, then the way the court operates is presumptions are conclusive. So if uh, you come if you come into child support court, which is an inferior court, and we'll get into that later on in this video, you the presumption is you've given them jurisdiction and it's already conclusive. But if you go in there in a special appearance, you're fine because special appearance doesn't give jurisdiction just by phys by you physically showing up, but you do want to hear what actions are being taken against you and you want to confront your accuser. So you have the right to do that. I forgot what part of the constitution it is, but you do have the right to do that. All right, going on. It is, uni it is a universal principle that where power is delegated to any public officer or tribunal over a subject matter, and its exercise is confided to his or their discretion, the acts so done are binding and valid as to the subject matter and individual rights will not be disturbed collaterally for anything done in the exercise of that discretion within the authority and power conferred. I hope you guys can understand. If you're teaching anybody law, you should have just understood that sentence right there. Because if you can't understand that sentence, you shouldn't be teaching anybody about law. So here's my remarks and annotation. Okay, so it's a universal principle. So this is, it's almost like a maxim or axiom of law, right? And this is how it works. Where power is delegated to any public official over a subject matter. That should be pretty self-explanatory. That means any litigation, or at least any start of a litigation by a plaintiff. If a plaintiff brings up, hey, uh, such and such owes me $50 because he broke some contract, the courts do have the power to initially hear that litigation, right? And it's saying it's exercising. Anytime you're exercising something in law, you're exercising some power, a right, or a privilege, all right? So exercise confided to his or their discretion. That means pretty much on their own volition. If you don't know what volition means, look it up. All right. The acts so are binding. That means they're woven together into the subject matter and valid as to the subject matter. Now, juris, the, re, the only reason they can get jurisdiction over you, yes, the plaintiff, and if we're talking about child support, that's the county, is trying to sue you. So initially, the court has the right to hear the subject matter. But what in the instance of child support, and this is where all men's information comes in pretty good under 42 USC 
six five four three. It it has to be a separate organizational unit, right? So that's why they try to sue you in the municipality, which is the legislative court, and then they try to get you into the executive administrative court. But that's still the violation of separation of powers because you can't use the uh, uh, I would say the county congressional court or state congressional court to get you into an ex executive court. So right there, the proceedings are void. So I, you know, I could show clients how to do that, how to exploit that. And individual rights will not be disturbed collaterally for anything done in the exercise of that discretion within the authority and power conferred. So they have the power to hear the subject, right? but they only have jurisdiction over the subject, not you. These are your individual rights given by the constitution. So it says your rights will not be disturbed collaterally. That means we all know what collateral is. You know, if you get a loan, you know, you gotta put up some collateral to get the loan for a house or a car, you know? So you're not putting up your individual rights so they can have subject matter jurisdiction. It says, will will not be disturbed all right so they do disturb your rights and you have to recognize when that's being done they've broken a procedure and you can get the case tossed so anyway the only questions which can arise between an individual claiming a right under the acts done and the public or any person denying its validity are power in the officer and fraud in the party all other questions are settled by the decisions made or the act done by the tribunal or officer, whether executive, legislative, judicial, or special, unless an appeal is provided for, right? So basically what the, um, um, what the, I think this is a justice, yeah, because it's U.S. versus R. Rendondo. Um, the way I take that sentence is all other questions are settled by the decisions made. Other. And that, that's a key word here in the context of this whole paragraph. Other. Other than your individual rights. Right? All other questions are settled by the decision made. Like if you didn't bring up the fact that something was wrong in the proceeding, you know, that's why they said unless an appeal is provided for it. Because if you don't say nothing, you don't have no rights. You have to bring up your rights. And I hear people talking about, oh, you know, my remedy, 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 rem. Oh, Your Honor, what's my remedy? You st don't be stupid, okay? The judge is not going to give you your remedy. Because here, what the word remedy means. Let's see. And yes, in legal terms. I uh, mean, which is court law? Da, 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 da. Remedies. The means to achieve justice in any manner in which legal rights are involved. Remedies may be ordered by the court, granted by judgment after trial or hearing, by agreement between the persons claiming harm and the person he or she believes caused it, and by automatic operation of law. Some remedies require that certain acts be performed or prohibited, uh, or reason called equity. Others involve payment of money to cover loss due to injury or breach of contract, and still others require a court's declaration of rights of the parties in an order to honor them. An extraordinary remedy is a means employed by a judge to meet particular problems, such as appointment of a referee, master or receiver to investigate, report, or take charge of property. A provisional remedy is a temporary solution to hold matters in status quo pending and final decision or an attempt to see if the remedy will, will work. Let's see, I usually have my my legal definitions. Oh, y'all not supposed to look at that. Uh, legal definitions. So I should have remedy here. If I don't, ah, oh man, I'm slipping. I ain't got remedy there. So uh, let's see, case law clients. Um, not documents, books. Black Laws Fourth. Okay, here we go. So let's look at the Black Laws Fourth. Let's look at the word remedy, because this is. Uh, that's probably not it. 
now. They got they got remedy spread across the place on this in this book. Um, let's see, bruh. Let's see. Uh, uh, R E F. Uh, let's see. We're almost there to remedy. Sorry, it's a big book, y'all. I'm gonna take my time and look at this joint name. Remedial statute. Remand. Everybody should know what remand means by now. Uh, remedy. Here we go. Let's read this. Uh, the means by which a right is enforced. All right. So not only do you have to know what your right is, you have to enforce it. Or the violation of a right is prevented, redressed, or compensated. Remedies are four kinds. By act of the party injured, the principle of which are defense, recaption, distress, entry, abatement, and seizure. By operation of law, as in the case of retainer and remitter. Uh, also, child support operates up operation of law. Right? So you can redress that. By agreement between the parties, by accord and satisfaction and arbitration, and four, by judicial remedy. All right, and to get some case law here, the means employed to enforce a right or redress an in injury as distinguished from right. All right, so the enforcement, to enforce a right or redress an injury as distinguished from right. Yeah, you have rights, but unless you know how to enforce it, there's no remedy. So, pe so people talk about remedy. Oh, your honor, what? Your honor, he ain't gonna give you a remedy. You have to know what it is and you have to enforce it, okay? All right, moving on. Uh, here's some uh, annotation. Strictly speaking, this is from a judge in this case, Matthew versus Sniggs in Oklahoma. Strictly speaking, remedy is no part of the action but is the result thereof, the object for which the action is presented, the end to which all the litigation is directed. Uh, okay, I didn't know that was gonna come on. <laughs> Remedies for the redress of injuries are either public by indictment when the injury to the individual or to his property affects the public or private when the tort is only injurious to the individual. You know, and that's all that's all I'm gonna say on remedy man. Uh hold on, that's my that's my chief. Uh let me let me finish making this video and I'll call him back. Uh so anyway, let's go back to the website and I just had to address that real quick. I hear people talking about what's my remedy? It's pretty dumb. Okay. Continuing to subsection 40. In regard to inferior courts, which is administrative courts, child support, Title 4D, in regard to inferior courts, the presumption is adverse and their action must be confined strictly within the prescribed limits. Right? And the prescribed limits, the only way they can get that, get you into their, uh, let's say, special jurisdiction or limited jurisdiction is if you consent and must appear so on the face of the proceedings and i'm i have clients that i'm looking at some of their paperwork and it's already fraud it's fraud they don't have a judge's name uh they don't have their uh, what is it their bar number uh in some instances they don't even have the court where you're supposed to go to so they know that they're doing something wrong and they don't want any repercussions but they want you to be dumb enough to actually go take a DNA test or sign some paperwork. And we all know that we shouldn't be signing any paperwork. And must appear so on the face of the proceedings and also all the facts and grounds of the jurisdiction. So they, so get this. I know there's been a lot of uh, people saying child support. Well, it's assumed that they have jurisdiction. No, it's not. Look, look it up, subsection 40 on the Treatise of Jurisdiction. It's saying right here, I'll read it again. In regard to inferior courts, the presumption is adverse 
and their action must be confined strictly within the prescribed limits. They don't even have the power to hear the case. All right, if it's outside of their little itty bitty limits, they don't even have power to hear the case. Okay, it must appear on the face of the proceedings, make all their paperwork. And when you go into court, they have to say they have jurisdiction. All right, as also all the facts and grounds of the jurisdiction. So when you go into court and they just start reading off stuff, they want to they want to pretend so bad that it's a real court. But if you listen to what I just said and you use my services, uh, you could blow that right out of the water and challenge jurisdiction immediately or you leave and say, hey, if you got no valid claim against me, you got no jurisdiction. Why am I here? If there's no valid claim against me, I'm leaving because you guys are trying to sue me. Who's the injured party? Nobody. I'm leaving. And if they try to stop you, if they try to arrest you, which they don't have the power to arrest you. The only power that they have is if you sign that contract and they go over to the legislative court and say, hey, he signed this contract. We want to enforce the contract. And if you don't show up to a hearing in the municipality, then the judge says, hey, go arrest him because he signed a contract. Right. That's the only way they, they don't have the power to arrest you. So subsection 50 nor will a court take jurisdiction in order to declare the law or construe it. I hope y'all understand what that means. So uh, uh, child support can't take the case and then say what the law is. You've had, you would have to already have violated the law because they can only act ministerially. Even where the officer waives his constitutional exemption and joins with the relator in asking the exercise of this jurisdiction. In a case of this kind, the court held that the exemption for coercion by the courts is not a personal privilege of incumbent of the office created for his benefit and to be asserted or waived at this pleasure. An executive, you know what, uh, this has a little bit, but this has to do with a certain case. And if you're interested in the case law, uh, actually, it's right here. It's in Minnesota. Um, Volume 20, page 366. So anyway, I just wanted to kind of break all this down for everybody. And um, and as far as, you know, people acting, you know, less than men, uh, because they feel like uh, they're taking food off of my plate. That's, that's really what it is. They're taking, you, you know, People have sprung up, including myself, trying to educate people on their own life. I mean, because your heart got to be into this. Before you get help from me, your heart got to be in it. Or I'm not I'm not messing with you because you're going to make me look bad because you think there's some kind of fairy tale paperwork that's going <laughs> to that's going to somehow circumvent uh, you studying. Uh, I will tell you what to study and I will give you my um what I would do in a certain situation because, you know, I'm not a law firm. Uh, I don't give legal advice. I educate. That's all I do is educate. Um, now you're going to be your attorney. Uh, so when talking about uh, your life, man, it's, uh, it's not to be taken as a joke. And hopefully if you don't get help from me, get help from somebody. But I just have some constructive criticism for people at the beginning of this video because I feel like it's really ridiculous that people are fighting for child support customers. Like I said, I got many businesses that I run. It's not just uh, child support. And, and, and I know a lot of people need help with child support, but here I'm just talking about understanding jurisdiction. So if you need my help, here's the number 702-426-9022. Uh, if you want to email us, Email us at advocates at goldenmoreservices.com. Um, I do get email messages now. If um, you go to the contact page, um, we actually use a subdomain for all the emails that we send out now. Um, I've been getting quite a few lately. So um, 
So anyway, we're just trying to streamline the process for everybody. I'd really like people to, uh, there's one lawyer, one crooked ass lawyer, her name is Renee Overstreet, uh, tried to tried to deceive one of my clients along with her, uh, her, her cohort. Um, oh, see, yeah, I do get emails then. Uh, this is some spam. Um, but yeah, and she tried to mess over one of my clients with an arbitrator. Uh, it was one of the most crookedest cases <laughs> I've ever heard, and that's actually the case that I won. Uh, and I'm working on some other ones that I'm trying, well, I'm going to win because um, my strategy is too airtight now. So, and actually, I'm going to write a blog called Strategy First. I see a lot of people, and I'm going to bring up the name again, Rick W., uh, just, thr just slinging shit up against the wall and hoping that something sticks. Uh, writ of interrogatories, I've never seen it work. Uh, he, if he can prove that it works, I've never seen it work. He, uh, But I will give uh, him credit. I think he did get one or two people off of child support. Uh, I don't know or on a prima facie he did, uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, he did get two people off on, on the surface. Uh, that's how things look on the surface. Um, and I forgot what he did. I forgot what he did. Um, but I think the subscribers kind of went to his head because I, I remember watching one of his videos. He said, oh, I have a lot of subscribers now, so I have to I don't know, I have the front now or something. I don't know. It's stupid stuff. Uh, I don't even have a lot of subscribers. So I, I, I don't care. Because um, the more people you get, the more bullshit. And, uh, and as quickly as you rose is as quickly as you will fall if you get into the public domain talking crap about people. Um, so I just keep it constructive. Uh, if you don't like what I'm saying, you don't have to like what I say. I'm not here to please any one person. I'm here to just do a job. Um, so anyway, you know, peace to the most high, peace to the creator. Um, understand the word God. People say they're the God of something. Um, gods have personal names. Uh, my Hebrew Israelite brothers know this. You know, they say Adonai. Adonai is the personal name. That means you have a personal relationship with God when you call him or her by her, his or her proper name. God is just a title. <laughs> For all my lost spiritual people out there, God is just a title. God is not the personal name of your God. So um, get that straight. You know, get that straight. You know, get, know who you're talking to. Uh, and we don't, in the Wabians, we don't care about beliefs and, and faith. We care about right knowledge, right wisdom, and right understanding. So if you ain't done the knowledge on it and you believe, you've already lost. Because you're believing in fairy tales or believing somebody told you something and you just assume that it's true without doing your research. You know, don't believe me. Everything I'm saying here uh, about jurisdiction, of course, go get the book and read it yourself. I gave you the subsections and the book title and the author. So go look it up. You know, but anyway, I'm out. Uh, Shalom, Rahubat. Uh, peace. Shalom, uh, and any other words that convey uh, peace and blessings to you and yours. All right, and I'm out.